sometime, don't you? Please? Welcome to Freedom Baptist Church this morning. You know, I take that off up here, can I? Yep. I'm having trouble hearing my own self this morning. But anyhow, welcome to Freedom Baptist Church this morning. We're so glad you're here. Uh, this might be the biggest crowd we've had since we started back. We appreciate you that have come out. Those of you that may be watching by way of the internet, we're just so glad to have you. And a beautiful day here in Florida. Hot, hot, hot already. And that's, hey, that's, that's Florida's hot. Florida's sandy, Florida's buggy, Florida's rainy, and all those things, but you, we love it, amen? amen. And as, as Brother Brooks said, well, he, he told me, he said, the heat index is supposed to be like 105 today. Yeah. I knew when I stepped out of the house this morning, I said, woo, doggies. And you know what that, you know what woo doggies means? Wow. That means wow. Yeah, that's woo doggies, and man, that means wow. So, uh, man, anyhow, it's so good to have you. We appreciate you being here. We're looking forward to a great day. Did you come to have a great time? Amen. Amen. We want to have a, we want to have a great, great service today. We want you to pray. We want you to do your part. And again, we are so glad to see you. Wouldn't it be good if we could just take a minute and just hug everybody just right real good and, and just let them know we love you. But I'll give you a big air hug and let you know we love you. And uh, wow, thank you again for being here. So we're going to get ready to get started. Brother Bill's going to come and lead us in the pledges this morning. Brother Bill. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Stay standing. Stay standing. Just look around at people with your eyeballs and give them a handshake with your eyeballs. How about that? There you go. There you go. Well, we're going to sing a song, and we were talking earlier also on the Mike and Mike show that this is the one-year anniversary of meeting over at... Uh, 
Mayberry trailer. Remember when we met the Mayberry trailer that first day? Remember how hot it was? Praise the Lord for air conditioning. Amen. But it's good. We're going to sing Count Your Blessings. And count your blessings that we sing this great, great song. Okay? Wonderful hymn of faith. Here we go. That's what it talks about. When you're upon life's billows, oh, guess what? Praise the Lord. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Here we go. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings. Praise the Lord. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what. Who all by raising your hand can say, I'm a blessed, I'm blessed. Amen. Isn't God good to bless us this way? Oh, even in amid the conflict. Whether it's a big conflict or a small conflict, I have a lot of small conflicts, and I have some really big conflicts. But even in the midst of the storm, guess what? Jesus is there, amen? And he's there for you. Too. Let's sing this last verse. So amid the conflict. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your all oh, praise God. Count your blessings. Oh yes. Count your blessings. Oh praise the Lord. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God. Let's give a heart, hearty amen this morning. Hold up. All right, thank you. Thank you, Brother Brooks, you be Brother Jim. Appreciate that, Brother Bill, on the pledges this morning. We're going to get ready to go to prayer this morning. And, uh, you know, I said Wednesday night, if you're watching the program Wednesday night, when I pray, just bow your head and whisper a prayer, will you? If you can't remember all of the names and, and situations, but... Whisper a prayer that God would bless. I don't know about you, but I need God in my life. And I need His touch and His power. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for what God has done. I'm excited for what God is doing and what God's going to do. Amen? I don't know about you. You know, if you listen to the news and the government and everybody, the, the future looks pretty bleak at times. But if you look up, the future looks pretty bright. Amen? So we're going to get ready to go to prayer. Remember our country, our leaders, everything that's going on with all those people making decisions, all the people in a nursing home, all the people, doctors, responders, people that work in there. Uh, Miss Jean works in a nursing home. Uh, Miss Mary's mom's in a nursing home. All those people want to remember them. All those people that have been uh, affected by COVID-19, we want to remember them. Diana Harmon's family, remember Miss Diana this morning? Her second cousin passed away, said it was the matriarch on her mother's side of the family, so we'll remember Miss Diane and her family this morning. Cliff's back. Want to pray for Brother Cliff? He's got to go the 11th. He said, got to go back the 11th and hopefully get that taken care of. Find out what they're going to do. Brother Kanuki went back to the doctor Friday. Had consultation. They did not do that oblation. So remember them. Uh, they're not here this morning, but we miss them when they're not, they're not here. Uh, Miss Ruth up in Tennessee is going to be having her back surgery on the 17th. And I tell you, if you don't know anything about that, that's a praise in and of itself because the doctors had told her there's nothing we can do. And then he called back and said, you know, I want to see you again. And uh, so he's going to try to do something on the 17th. Remember little Miss T 
our student that was burned in the house far, house far. Boy, my West Virginia accent. <laughs> my West Virginia accent kicked in right there. Did you hear that? In the house far. You know what? It, woo, you know, we used to say that the wise men were firemen because they come from afar. And, uh, but, you know, that's West Virginia. Little T, bless her and her family. I, I've got myself tickled. Right here, on, right here on World Wide Web on the Internet going out. Pray for little Trish and her family yeah. and, uh, that was in the fire. How's that sound? Better? And, uh, wow, John and Sherry still battling. Cancer, Bill and Marge's uh, son and daughter-in-law, son-in-law and daughter. Want to pray for them and Bill and Marge. We've got a lot of folks that just, just really. I'm going to ask you, do you know somebody that stands in need of prayer? You stand in need of prayer. Would you just raise your hand up? God bless you. God bless you. We're going to pray this morning. I'm going to ask Major. Major, can you pull that mask down and come up? Maybe just open us up this morning in a word of prayer. Thank you. God bless you, buddy. All right. Good morning. Such a blessing to be back in the Lord's house. Good to see you, Brother Jim, Miss Tiny. Hey, there you are. Just talking about you guys. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. If you could uh, bow and pray with me. Father, we come to you this morning with uh, thankful hearts. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be back in your house, Father. We, we never want to take it for granted because uh, we know it's been taken away before. Lord, we just praise you for the opportunity to be here and to, to lift up worship and praise unto your holy name, dear Lord. We ask that you come down now, dear Lord, out of heaven, dear Lord, and just, just bring the fire, dear Lord. I ask that you be with uh, the pastor as he brings the message, Father. I ask that you would anoint him. Pray that uh, we wouldn't hear him, but that we would hear you through him, Father. And just bless him, dear Lord. I ask that you bless everyone that's here this morning, Father. I ask that you be with all the prayer requests, Lord. we got so many out there that's, that's hurting, dear Lord, so many that, that needs healing, so many that need your touch, Father. We know that you're the great physician, Lord. We ask that you just t touch and heal every one of them, dear Lord. I ask that you be with those that, that don't know you, Lord. We, we all know who I've lost, friends and family, dear Lord, that, that need you. Father, we, we pray for your conviction on them, dear Lord. I ask that you'd... Uh, be with our country, Father. We're in, uh, we're in bad shape right now, and we need you more than ever, Lord. We need, we need revival in our land, dear Lord, and, and you're the only answer, Father. I ask that you'd help us, that we would get your word out, Father, to the others, that they'd understand that there is hope and that you're our only hope, Father. And I ask that you'd uh, just be with us all this morning, dear Lord, and we thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> Well, this, this is a good song to sing, and I'm just going to let you stay seated for this song. And uh, it's, you know, one of those things where uh, sometimes I just find myself resting in the Lord. And the Bible tells us to rest in Him. What does that mean? It just means if you can do that, if you can rest, you can have peace. And I think rest and peace kind of go hand in hand. The fact that Jesus, praise the Lord, is for us. We have something to have great peace. Again, even in the most difficult thing, God can bring you joy. He can bring you peace. Sometimes you can't even understand it. How does that happen? As I'm going through this difficult time, that I still have peace, I still have joy. It's only because God, I'm telling you. I really like that banner that you made, Sally. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. You think about the, how you've been blessed and how God's moved in your life already. It's worth singing a song over. Amen. Well, this is a great song to sing. He hideth my soul. He hideth my soul in the cliff of the rock. It says, in the depths of his love, he covers me there with his hand. God bless you as we sing. Where rivers of pleasure 
words are true to you. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my This last verse, it says something that I just, it really, really causes me to, to say hallelujah. But it says, his perfect salvation, his perfect salvation. You see, I was saved over 40 years ago, praise God for that. I'm saved right now, and there's going to be this perfect salvation take place the moment we rise with him. And I mean, it's going to be... It, our, our, our salvation is forever, folks. It doesn't stop it when our, we lay this body down. It never stops. Amen. And that's what's worth praising him over. The fact that you're saved. If you're saved this morning, you know it. I'm going to put you in a really difficult spot right here. If you're saved and you know it and you love God because of it, just shout out amen one time. Amen. He's amen. worth that every moment of your life amen. because he caused that for you. I just praise God for His cause. You know what His cause is? You. You are the Lord's cause. And He gave His life for that cause, that you have the opportunity to be saved by choosing Christ. He chose you so that you could choose Him. Isn't that something? God's good that way. Let's sing this last. And I think of just flying off to heaven when I think of this verse. Beautiful verse to sing. Let's all sing it together. When clothed in His brightness, transported I rise to meet Him in clouds of the sky. I love it. His perfect salvation, His wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. Let's sing it out. He hides in my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. And covers me I mean, God's so good to us. Miss Jean, you come up and prepare to sing this morning. And I thank God for Miss Jean. She, uh, she just has a spirit about her. And what I like so much, if, if I may say so, I'm bragging on Jesus for just a second here. I like the way she sings because it, it like, it's like she's alive when she sings. You ever been around people that just seem like they're not even alive? I mean, that, that's pretty boring. Some people are really boring. They just sit there like... A knot on a log. I know you would. If you was a knot on a log, you'd be a shaking knot. I'll tell you what. But uh, can't be still. Well, get your microphone right there. You're going to use that mic, and she's going to come and she's going to sing a song that I already know. I got to hear just. Oh, I can do that. I have the ability. Now, let's see. Yeah, I got the ability to turn that. I even held it toward the bottom so you can have a different handhold on it. Oh, that's all right. I'll keep my germs off of you this morning. I, you know what? I think that God, when I, I just thank God when we get to heaven, we don't have to worry about germs. Amen. Isn't that something? There'd be no germs in heaven. I'd read one time where there's no pain in heaven, but I married a girl with her last name is Pain. And I, but I remind her now her last name is Brooks. Now she has the chance. All right, dear. God bless you this thank morning. You. Good morning. Um, I think this song is very appropriate for the times that we're living in today, and I hope you enjoy it. It's called, 
I believe he's coming back. Brother Terrence. High upon a mountain from where he ascended an angel of the Lord declared that it would be he said don't stand there grieving for the one that you see leaving in like man is coming back for you and me and I believe he's coming back like he said I believe that a trumpet's gonna sound so loud one day it'll wake the dead and in God's twinkling of the night he'll split the eastern sky and I believe he's coming back like he said Time is nearing, we'll soon see his appearing. Oh, this could be the hour, yes, this could be the day when the saints from every nation shall lose their gravitation and in the middle of the air be called away. I believe he's coming back like he said I believe that a trumpet's gonna sound so loud One day it'll wake the dead And in the twinkling of his eye He'll split the eastern sky And I believe he's coming back like he said I believe he's coming back like he said I believe that a trumpet's gonna sound so loud one day it'll wake the dead and in the twinkling of an eye he'll split the eastern sky and I believe he's coming back just like he said. And in the twinkling of an eye, he'll split the eastern sky. And I believe he's coming back like he said. Amen. Thank you, Miss Jean. Boy, I like that, don't you? Amen. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that's the reason why we're gathered here today is because we believe that. And if you don't believe that, you've gathered in a good spot. Amen? Amen. All right. Again, so good to see everybody out. And, you know, I, I have to say this. I shouldn't, but I am. I'm glad that blowing birthday candles out didn't blow Mike Brooks's fire out. Yeah. Amen? Amen. He still got the fire of God, man. Birthdays don't take, hey, that shouldn't have anything to do with it. Amen? Amen. All right, got your Bible this morning. Open up to the book of Leviticus. You said, what, the book of what? <laughs> Is that in the Bible? Yeah. The book of Leviticus, Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus. Boy, how long has it been since you've heard a sermon out of Leviticus? Well, I've used it some, but... I'm going to go right there today. Leviticus chapter 10, I'm going to read the first couple of verses. You might want to read more at your pleasure. Make sure I'm on there. Leviticus, tongue-tied right off the bat. Isn't it amazing? I've been tongue-tied all morning. Anybody ever get tongue-tied? I just pray that God will loosen my tongue. And that thing will work the way it's supposed to work this morning. If it doesn't, we're all going to be amazed. Levit 
I might get Mike Brooks come up here, Brother Canuck, and, 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 and you say, is it in the Bible? I can't even say it. <laughs> Leviticus, chapter number 10. I'm, I'm going to try not to, say, not to say that again right now. Verse number 1, and Nadab and Abihu, boy, I got those right, I believe, the sons of Aaron took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Wow. The title of my sermon this morning is Strange Fire. Strange Fire. I don't know if you know this or not. I preached 15 sermons on the fire of God. I hope that you've gotten something out of that. Remember that the fire of God, what it represents, the presence, the power, and the protection of Almighty God. And you know what, as, as I think about that, we need those three things today in America. As Major prayed this morning, we're in a mess. And if ever there was a time in America when we need the presence and the power and the protection of Almighty God, it's today. I have to say this, that liberalism and progressive ideas are taking our country down the wrong road fast. You know what my wife said to me yesterday, and she says this periodically, she says, preach us a little hope. Well, you know what? We need hope, amen? We're living in a time when, it, it, listen, I don't know when we've ever needed more of a biblical hope than what we have today. My concern, though, is that when we need a biblical hope, when we need a hope in something that is real, that only God can give, Satan offers people a false hope. And strange fire to replace real fire. And I'm going to be talking about that today. Since I've been preaching on these fire sermons, you wouldn't want to know how long I've been working on this sermon. I've been wanting to incorporate this into that rotation for weeks and months and, and just, I can't tell you how long, and it just never did seem like it was the right place. I hope this will be the right place today. Amen? You say, why do you want to preach on strange fire? Well, I'm glad you asked that because I want you to know something. Satan is an imitator, not a creator. There's only one creator, and that's the Lord God Almighty. And Satan tries to, listen, he, do, he tries to imitate whatever God has. Satan has something imitation. And there's real fire, and then there's strange fire. Now this may break out into a series in and of itself. So I, we could put this in the fire series, I guess. But you know what? When you think about Satan being an imitator, you know what? You have a false, he has a false Christ. Am I right? You know, the Antichrist during the tribulation. Don't forget about that. There's, there's a false gospel out there. That, listen, it's all over the TV and the airwaves. It's not a biblical gospel. It's a false gospel that are giving people, I believe there are a lot of people, you know, there are a lot of people that's going to stand before Jesus and Jesus says they're going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this and that in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me. I used to know you. He said, I never knew you. So don't say those people have been saved. There are a lot of people out there that have a false hope. There's a false salvation. Am I right? There are people that believe they've been saved. They've never been saved. If you missed my Wednesday night sermon, I started a little mini-series or a big series, whatever you want to call it, on the parable of the sower. The four types of soil. That, that, that the seed of God, the word of God falls. And only one of those, only one of those grounds were saved people. You got a lot of emotional hearers. You got a lot of people that just come and try Jesus and they walk off. Well, I'll say a little bit about that maybe later on or maybe Wednesday. Night, but you know, you got a false gospel, you got a false salvation, you got a false Christ. You have false Christians. Not everybody that says they're a Christian is a biblical born again Christian. We have a lot of nominal Christians. The major uses that word some. Nominal means they're in Christian in name only. I remember a guy said years ago, told me we were talking along this line, and he said, you know, I'm a practicing Christian. 
Isn't that, isn't that terrible that you have to, have to define what Christian is today because we have so many non-practicing so-called Christians. You have false preachers. You know, the Bible says the Bible says that Satan himself would transform himself into an angel of light. Listen, there are false preachers out there. They're false churches. There's going to be a, there's going to be a church here when the rapture takes place. It's not going to be the blood-bought church. It's going to be the church that's been left behind, the church that's not saved, and Satan will take his people and have that one-world religion. And you've got a lot of, I keep wanting to do a sermon on all the fake and false things that we have. But unfortunately, we're living in a day where many people have been deceived by Satan because he's the great imitator. So I want to talk about not necessarily the fire of God, but the strange fire. You say, what is strange fire? Strange fire is fire that's not from God. It's not from, it comes from another place. It's, it's foreign fire, it's alien fire, it's, it's from a person or a place or a thing that God has not sanctioned or ordained. It's not God's real holy fire. It's wildfire. We call it wildfire sometimes. It's an imitation fire. It's a replacement fire. It's a fake fire. It's a dangerous and deadly fire. And we're inundated with it in America today. In a day of such deception, such hypocrisy, so many pretenders, charlatans, fakes, strange fire in our churches. It would do us good to remember the only thing, everything needs to be tested by the word of God. Amen. This is our only rule of faith and practice. 1 John 4, 1, you might want to write this verse down and read it later on. 1 John 4, 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. That's a warning right out of the Bible. You know there are people in America today, they believe anything they hear. If it's somebody, you know, if it's somebody with a Bible in a church building or a big congregation or a TV showing or, or something like that, people just say, well, they must be right. No, they must not be right. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That was 2,000 years ago. You think we're any better today or worse? I can tell you, as we get closer to the rapture of the church, I believe Satan is dumping everything he can on, on the world to get people turned away from the true, pure gospel of God and the real fire of God. I don't mean to insult you. and I'm not, I, So that if, you, if this doesn't apply to you, just push it back to your neighbor. But we've become so spiritually gullible today. I've never seen a time when people are so spiritually gullible. Listen, I didn't fall off the tater wagon as it came through town last night. I've said this over and I've got over 40 years of ministry. Mike Brooks has over 44 years of ministry. Jim Kanuki has over 40 years of ministry. We didn't come in last night on the wagon that came in and dropped in. And I'm going to tell you what I've seen. I've seen people become more spiritually gullible since I started over 40 years ago than any other time in the history of America. They're just spiritually gullible. You say, why, why do you think that's happening? I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you exactly why it's happening. Because we're getting set up for the coming of the Antichrist. The European Union said years ago they were looking for a man. They didn't care who he was. They're looking for a man that can come in and solve the problems. You don't think the world is ready and ripe for somebody to step in and step on the scene and say, hey, I have the answers? Or after the rapture of the church, that's exactly what the Antichrist is going to do. And he's going to be able to do strange things. He's going to be able to do crazy things. He's going to be able to call fire down. He's going to be, they're going to be able to do all kind of things because he's going to want people to worship him as Jesus Christ. Well, we're seeing that today. We're being set up. We're being, we're being, we're, 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 like, we're just like cattle that are being herded together, together and being pushed down through the stalls and getting set up for the coming of the Antichrist. And those that will be left behind will be ready to accept that. Because the Bible says they believe the lion be damned. Amen. People, listen, people, 
the devil's an imposter. He's an imitator. You know, we, we just believe that, you know, again, if you've got a Bible and you've got a church and you've got a congregation, you've got a Learjet, and you've got three or four homes, you must, be, you must be the real deal. No, no, I don't believe that. The devil loves to find people. Let me tell you something. Here's where you need to be cautious. The devil loves to find people who are new converts. New convert. <clears throat> new converts are so eager to learn the Bible that they grab onto everything that goes by. That's one of the dangers of COVID-19. That we have not been able to be close by and keep hands on people and disciple people the way they need to be discipled. They're kind of just out there just roaming around. And the devil loves to find new converts because they're excited and he just puts all this trash on them. And you know what a new convert thinks? Well, it must, it's, it's the Bible. It must be true. Well, listen, he loves to find somebody that's got a hunger. You get a hunger for the Word of God and to want to grow close to God, guess what the devil will do? He'll throw this strange, crazy stuff on you. He loves to find people who say, you know, I want to, you know, Oh, pastor, I want to, I want, you know, the Bible made, the Bible, I don't know what to name, but the Bible made easy in 30 days. Well, I'm going to tell you, I've been, I've been working on it for over 40 years, and I'm going to tell you what, the only one way I know to learn the Bible, and that is to get in the Bible, read the Bible, study the Bible, practice the Bible, be in church, get around good godly people. There is no quick, easy way. And people say, well, I want to, I want to know it all today. You can't know it all today. You can line Mike Brooks, Jim Canucky, and me up, and we don't even know it all today. We're a long way from knowing it all today. And I'm amazed that people have been saved for a couple weeks, a couple months, or a couple years, and they act like, I know it all. Well, I'm just here to tell you, you don't know it all. you got a long way to go, really, to be honest with you. So don't be deceived by strange fire. Again, test everything by the Bible, because, you know, we're living in a day, we're living in a day, in, 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 in such a day where there's a lack of the real fire of God that many have accepted and adopted strange fire. No fire churches and no fire preaching have helped promote strange fire. You know why? Because I, I believe the reason there's so much strange fire in, in America today is because there's so little of the real fire. And when there's no real fire, when the real fire is missing, people begin to try to replace that fire with something else, either a program or a plan or this or for that, and you end up with strange fire. Amen? The fact is, and I believe I said this the other night on the Wednesday night program, and I don't know if I got it right or not, but I'll be close. The fact is there's such a lack of real fire fire today, the strange fire has become so popular and so accepted because real fire seems so foreign and strange to people. There's a lot, listen, <laughs> you say, I don't know what strange fire is, I'm going to help you this morning. Go turn your TV station on. Now, I'm not broad stroking everybody, I don't like broad strokes. Because I've been painted on broad strokes with people, and I don't like it. But I'm going to give you a pretty broad stroke. Lots of the stuff that you see on religious TV is crazy. Well, got quiet on that. I thought everybody should stand up in a chair, wave the Bible, and say, Amen, Pastor. You must be watching it. I'm just here, hey, I'm your pastor. I'm here to tell you that a lot of that stuff on TV, you need to push the off button on. You help them promote these guys that have Lear jets, and, and one Lear jet's not enough, they want two. And a small one's not enough, they want a bigger one. And one home's not enough, they want two or three or four. And they've got all this money, and people are poor and starving to death. And poor people, gullible people, biblically ignorant people are funding that. Amen? Yeah. I'm begging for an amen. I'm if you're watching by way of the internet, I'm trying my best to get an amen out of this group right here today. <laughs> listen, I, I just got to tell you, listen, I, I got to tell you, and I'm going to get on this, and this will probably just, just put your seatbelt on, honey, and hold on. This ought to just ruffle you a little bit, like sandpaper right on a bad cut. 
the real fire of God, the power of God, it ought to cause some excitement. It ought to cause some joy. It ought to cause you some happiness. It ought to stir your soul. It ought to put some zeal in you. It ought to cause you to be passionate about the things of God. And so many times that you say, well, I don't believe that. Well, I'm going to tell you what. You read your Bible. Read the book of Psalms. Read the New Testament because I'm going to tell you, listen, a lot of people got happy. Anybody that Jesus ever touched, they didn't go away the same way. That song we sang, he touched me. And man, I have never been the same. Amen. But I got to say, I got to say there are so many dead Drive. Well, I have to work that in, don't I? There's so many dead, <clears throat> dry, formal, cold churches that have no passion, no excitement, no zeal, no expression of worship, that many are spiritually dry and dead and are lethargic. You never know you were in church. You think you were in a mortuary. I told somebody the other day, man, listen, I'm an old-time Baptist preacher. Amen? I've been in funerals, man. It felt like you were in revival. Man, I've been in churches. It felt like you were in a cemetery. Am I right? Man, I don't understand. I'm going to say it again. I don't know how the power of God, how the touch of God, how the true living God can come down and live and make his abode in your heart and people remain dead and dry. And I think because of that, because of that, I think people have looked for some type of excitement. And they're not getting it in most churches, so it's opened the door up for wildfire. Let me ask you a question. You remember the day when Jesus touched you? Man, can you just remember that day? I said that on one of the programs a week or so ago, and a young girl from back home that's now living over on the coast in Florida put on there made a comment. I remember the day I got saved, and my mom and dad brought me to your house the next day, and then you baptized me. I thought, wow, she remembers the day. My wife just celebrated 46 years in a church camp, same place that I accepted the call to preach. I don't know, were you saved there or not in that same church camp? I'm going to tell you what, church camp has meant a lot to us down through the years. My wife was saved 46 years ago down there beside a bunk in a, in a girl's dorm in a church camp that knew something about the power of God. And I'm going to tell you, she's never lost it. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I, listen, in case you don't know it, I promote old-time Christianity. I'm not much on this modern, newfangled, new version, all this stuff that's come down the line that everybody's lined up for and followed because I'm going to tell you, I believe in the Bible. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to say something here so you hold on. I can say this. I don't know if you can, but I can. I'm concerned that many Baptist churches... I'm not even going to talk about the other denominations, although I may before I finish. I'm concerned that many Baptist churches might be, they might be pretty doctrinally straight, yet they're just spiritually lifeless. Now, am I right? We've talked about it. It's like they're afraid of the power of God. It's like, man, if some, listen, you know, if some places, if you'd raise your hand to say amen, they'd go. I mean, I, I, what, and, and people, you know, remember, the, you know, I'm just, I don't know where to go from here. I'm amazed when people listen to me preaching and say, well, I don't think you're a Baptist. I'm, I, listen, I was Baptist born and Baptist bred, and I'll probably die and be Baptist dead. I know something about the Baptist denomination. We're not, we're not all dead. We're not all dry. We're not all formal. We're not all cold. Right. Baptists were shouting when nobody else was shouting. They were, they were shouting. Amen. Where's the shout gone to in the Baptist church? Amen. You know, raise your hands and say, pray, let alone choo-chooing. <laughs> God help us if we choo-choo. And we, we, we have any, God help us if we have any expression of, of excitement and joy that comes in your life. And here's the problem. All those Baptist churches and the preachers, they think, well, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid if we do that, strange fire is going to come in. 
We over a year old at Freedom Baptist Church. I ain't never been concerned about strange fire coming in. Can I say that again? Pardon my French. But I ain't never been concerned. Well, we've had some services, buddy. I'm going to tell you what. Just about take the roof off. People go out that door and say, I don't believe you're a Baptist. Listen, I'm a blood-bought, born-again child of God that lives down in my soul. I just go by the Baptist name, but I'm a Christian. That philosophy, you know, it, 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 that preachers want, they want their churches to be alive and exciting, but they quench the Spirit of God. They want to put a thumb on everybody. We want you to be happy, but don't tell anybody. If you're going to say amen, put your mask on where nobody can see you or hear you. Well, we're afraid somebody will do something strange. Listen, I'm going to say again, listen. That mentality and that philosophy has caused us to be where we are today in 2020. It's opened the door wide open for a lot of strange fire and this contemporary movement that we're seeing inundate America. Amen? I, I, just, you know, I just believe there are people that have a long... You know, listen, go back to March 1st and we met out here on this parking lot. My goodness, we had a time. Amen. I mean, we had a time. Amen. Man, I just have to, I've said from the very start, man, listen, I believe that there are people that have a longing, that have a desire, that have the power of God, that want to feel the power of God, that wants the touch of God, that we can do it the right way. Yeah. And you don't have to be afraid, amen? amen. Listen, I long for the real fire of God. I need the real fire, fire of God. I need the power of God. I want the Holy Spirit to move in my life. I know the difference in the fire of God and strange fire. Amen. Some of the stuff that you see on TV, and I may mention it before I get finished, not today probably, so don't, don't lose your breakfast. Some of the stuff that you see on TV that's crazy, can I just tell you the way you, one easy Easy way you can tell what's crazy. If you, if you watch it and listen to it and it sounds crazy, it probably is. People say, well, did you see what, they, what they're doing, what they're promoting? That's because the Bible's been, we've been practicing New Testament Christianity for 2,000 years. And all of a sudden, we've, we, got, we, got, we got to have to have another way of doing it. No. We have a Holy Bible and the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us that gives us the guidelines and lets us know what's right. Amen. And I'm going to say this to you, and if it bothers you, God bless you, hit an altar. The Holy Ghost of God will never do anything that's contrary to the Word of God. Amen. It will never, He will never, ever contradict the Word of God. Amen. He, boy, I love that, don't you? <laughs> My grandboy right there, raising him upright, aren't we? Hey, he inspired these men to write the Word of God. He authored the Word of God. And when people say the Holy Spirit said to do this and do that, listen, if it's not in the Bible, you need to be careful, amen? So listen, the problem is, what time is it? The problem is, I'm not down to point one yet. The problem is, We've quit preaching what thus saith the word of God and we've started preaching on what the world wants and promotes. And it's brought a, da it's brought a dangerous, dangerous doctrine into the church. And I believe there are going to be a lot of people that's going to end up in hell right off of a church pew that have never been saved, that have never trusted Jesus. They've trusted some man. They've trusted some movement. They've trusted everything but the Word of God and the power of God. We need to examine the Bible to see what we can learn about strange fire. Amen? Amen. Let me give you the background to this piece of Scripture. Let me tell you what was going on. There had been a seven-day feast to dedicate the tabernacle of God. Remember when they came out of Egypt and they were moving through the wilderness that God instructed Moses 
to build the tabernacle. It was a pattern from things in heaven that he built on earth and it was dedicated. It was holy. It was ordained. It was sanctified. It was set aside. It came exactly the way God wanted it. And they had been in a seven day dedication. Man, that'd be great if we could do that for our one year anniversary, wouldn't it? On how to do worship right in the tabernacle in the Old Testament. If you go back to verse number, chapter number 9 and look at the first words of chapter number 9, verse 1. And it came to pass on the eighth day. On the eighth day. That refers to the day when the priesthood, the priesthood is finally able. The tabernacle has been built. Man, it's been blessed. Listen, it's now time the priesthood and Aaron was the first high priest. The time had finally come to go in and to do his worship and to do his work inside that tabernacle. And you know what? He went in. And on the first day, the first day of Aaron's ministry, listen, listen, he went in and he offered that sacrifice. And he did it, and listen, he, did, he didn't do it his way. He did it God's way. He did it according to what the word of God told him. And when he came out, you know what happened? You know what happened as the people were standing there? You know what happened? Hey, the fire of God fell. You know what that fire, that's the presence and the power of Almighty God. That was God putting his blessings upon what had happened. Wow. But before that first day had closed, something strange happened. I kind of alluded a little bit to this in my Wednesday night message about how quickly the devil comes and tries to take the word of God away from people when they hear it, when it's preached, when it's taught, because they don't want you to hear the word of God. And I thought, wow, you know where the devil shows up? I'm going to tell you what, the, devil's, the devil wouldn't, he wouldn't show his face in a lot of churches in America today. He doesn't have to. You know where he shows his You know where the devil shows up? I don't want to look at you because you think I'm thinking you're the devil. (laughs) You know where the devil shows up? He shows up in churches that are on fire and it's alive. It's doing something for God. That's where he shows up. On the first day, he didn't wait a week. He didn't, listen, he didn't wait a month. He didn't wait two or three days. On the first day that the fire of God fell, guess who showed up next? Strange fire. And I've got to tell you something, it hadn't changed in thousands of years. Amen. The devil always shows up, and he shows up quickly to disrupt what God is doing. Amen. Amen. Aaron had offered the sacrifices. God had put his approval on it. He had come down with holy fire. And then in a moment, then in a moment, you listen, the Bible doesn't give us enough information, so I just have to preach it as it says. I don't know why. I don't know what got into these two boys, Nadab and Abihu. They were the sons of Aaron. They were priests of God. They were next in line to become the high priest after Aaron. I don't know what got into them. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what caused them to do it. But all of a sudden they decided, we're going to do it our way. And I'm going to tell you what, their way got them killed. And I have to say that I'm cons- it's amazing that God hadn't gotten in a killing mood today with all that's going on in America. Amen? And it changed that day from one of rejoicing to a day of mourning. You say, who were Nadab and Abihu? Lord, let me tell you. First of all, let me tell you who they, who they were not so you'll understand where I'm going. They were not false prophets or teachers. They were not scam artists. They were not trying to bring some Canaanite false religion or false gods into Israel. Who were they? They were priests of the Most High God. They were priests of Israel. They were sons of Aaron. They appeared to be godly. They were religious leaders in Israel. And you know what? You say, what did they do with them? And they, listen, they did a couple things. Let me just hit on them real quick. Number one, here's, here's some of the things they did. It, it reads like they may have taken their own censer. When really the utensils for worship in the tabernacle, God had laid out. 
and you had to use those instruments and those utensils. And it looked like they may have taken their own censer and, and used that to go put strange fire in. And then they offered it together when really the high priest was supposed to offer it by himself. And then they, number three, you'll, you'll like this word. I used it a couple weeks ago. They presumptuously encroached upon the function of the high priest. They were not the high priest. The high priest had a duty to do. But these boys thought, you know what? Daddy did it. I'll just follow and do it, do it my way. And I'm going to tell you what, listen. You, you see where that turned out. Number four, they offered incense at an unauthorized time. It wasn't a time for them to go in. Number five, they offered strange fire. Well, I, wish the, I can't wait to get to heaven. Maybe Jesus tells all about that strange fire. I don't know where they got it, but it was not from the altar of God. And there's a, there are a lot of things going on in America that's not from the altar of God. Amen. Amen. Here's an interesting side note. If you go down, are you with me in verse chapter number 10? This will ruffle you. Don't let it ruffle you. Just take it for the word of God. Put your seatbelt on. Hang on. Verse number 8, And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation. Here's an interesting note that many commentators feel like those boys had been drinking alcohol and their mind was not just right because they were fuzzed up and fuzzed over and buzzed over. And alcohol had caused them to become intoxicated. And they did things that they might not normally do. It probably caused them not to know the difference between what was right and what was wrong. It probably caused them not to know the difference between what was legal and what was illegal. And it certainly caused them not to know the difference between what is holy and what is unholy. Wow. Wow. That should warn us, the modern day reader, about worshiping God in our own way. This feel good. I'm, you know, well, you know, well, you know, pastor, this makes me feel so good. I don't care how good it makes you feel. In fact, I'm going to say this. Listen, I'm all for feeling good. Man, I'm all for feeling good. I like being happy in the Lord. But everybody wants to be happy when really when you ought to be holy. God wants you to be holy. We're going to a happy place one day. Man, Brother Brooks said we're going to a place where there'll be no more germs. No, I said, we'll sing that old song. No germs, no germs up there. What's the name of that song? Well, I can't think of the name, but I got the tune, right? You, you know that? that I don't know how it goes, but I just put germs with it. But you know, this should warn us about stuff that some of this contemporary, some of this television, some of these traditional churches that have veered away from the Bible and they've started doing this stuff that is carnal, that's fleshly, that, that appeals to the flesh more than the Spirit of God. The Spirit that God has put inside of us and it feeds the flesh. Amen? All right, you ready? It's time to go. Point number one. Point number one, I'm going to quit just in a minute. You say you're going to finish? Absolutely not. You're going to come right back and hit it next week. See if you come back next week for round two. See if I can punch you around on you a little bit and you come back and try one more round. Take it. Let me give you this. Let me just tell you. I'm not going to give you point one. I'll give it to you next week. But I'm going to say this in closing. That we need to be real, real real careful about what we watch, who we watch, and who we listen to Amen. on the TV or the internet. Because there are people out there that, and, I, and, I, and it, boy, it grieves me, it pains me, Brother Mike, to say this, but there are people out there who are just in the ministry for the money. They don't, they don't, they don't, I don't know how to say it. They don't care a bit more about you than the man in the moon. 
I used to tell people years ago, people say, well, you know, Pastor, we give, we give, we give our church a little bit of money and we send our other money to the, to the TV preacher, evangelist. I said, won't you call him when you get in the hospital? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Call him up when you're sick. Yeah. Call him up when you need something. See if you can get a hold of him. Well, we just want to feel like we want to help. Do you realize that, do you realize that America has bought into that health and wealth prosperity movement? Where you get some guy that gets up and says, God wants everybody to be healthy and God wants everybody to be wealthy. And if you'll give your seed offering, if you'll send me a hundred dollars, God will bless that and send you back a thousand. You know how many people jump on that? You know how many people don't get their money back? They don't get their thousand plus they don't get their hundred back. People go broke. You know how many people follow these faith healers around? Because they don't have any other hope in the world and they're willing to try anything in the world and they're giving them money. I said a couple weeks ago, I'm going to say it again. I, I don't believe in faith healers. I believe in faith healing and God can touch anybody he wants to touch. But I don't believe anybody in this day and age has the power. I don't care who it is. I don't care. Mm. Boy, I just about came out with names. But I may do it before it's over, Pastor Jim. I don't care who you are, I don't care how big your ministry is, I don't care how many jets you got. You don't have the power to heal. I used to, I used to, is this how gullible people are? If I had the power to go out and touch somebody, I wouldn't put up a sign and say, come to me. I'd say, guys, get me, get, put me in something and take me to every hospital, take me to every nursing home, take me to everybody that's sick. Man does not have that power today. Amen. We're living in a different age. We don't have that kind of power. The apostles had that power. It was, it was to give them credentials. It was to give them to show them. Listen, we have the word of God today. Listen, it's not about the body. As much as we want to pray for healing, it, we're going to die. It's about this inner man. It's about that soul that you have. That one of these days, and you don't hardly hear any of them. You don't hardly hear any of them talk about sin. You don't hear any of them talk about that. They talk about everything but that. Well, God, if you if you have enough faith, you're going to be you're going to be healthy. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Been a lot of people die with COVID that had the faith. Been a lot of people. I've seen, hey, listen. I've seen enough people in our families, in, 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 in our churches, that have died with cancer that had the faith. I've seen a lot of people die just from strange and crazy ways. It seems like things that happen. Having faith in God does not exempt you from the troubles of the world. And they shield themselves with this. With this, this like, like they've got something between me and you. And they put it out there and say, well, God wants you healed. And if you're not healed, I'm going to pray for you. And if you don't get healed, you don't have enough faith in God. And people go home with their head hung down thinking, wow. I don't have enough faith in God. I'm going to tell you what faith in You go from zero to ten. Zero being a little bit of faith, ten being a lot of faith. Anywhere on the scales, faith in God. You always have ten faith. I don't always have ten faith. But I want to always have faith. Amen? And these jokers, man, going, but you don't have enough faith in God. I had a guy tell me one time, and I'm getting far away. You want to sing me down. I had a guy tell me one time, I said, my mother died with cancer, with lung cancer. My wife was with her when she died. Man, it, I'm going to tell you, it, it ate her up. And she suffered and suffered and suffered. And I had a guy tell me one time, if your mother would have had enough faith, she wouldn't have to suffer. It's a miracle that I didn't cause him suffering. I wanted to cause him suffering. But you've got so many people out there all over America that promotes that kind of stuff. If it's not in the Bible, it's probably strange fire. Amen. I'm asking you today on part one, 
of strange fire. Make sure it's in the Bible. Strange fire. You know, I was looking at, I know you realize that if you were here in the room with me, uh, if you were online, you were probably focused on Pastor because you had a close-up shot of Pastor during this message. But behind him on the wall, we had that emblem, strange fire, and all that glowing fire behind it. That was kind of mesmerizing a little bit. Sometimes you get to focus on that. That's the way strange fire works. It creeps in on you. Next thing you know, it's got your attention rather than the real truth of what's going on around you. And uh, today, I don't know what's going on in your life. What a message. Strange fire. God knows what's going on in your life. I pray you know what's going on in your life and that you know the truth. Let's stand together. We're going to sing this song entitled Without Him. I can't think of a truer song to sing with this, with this message today. But without Him, I can do nothing. Without Him, I'd surely fail. Without Him, I'd be drifting. <laughs> think about it. Like a ship without a sail. Jesus, wow. Today you come. If you need to hit this altar, you come. Do business with the Lord. He's ready for you. He's waiting on you. He's calling you today. If you're out there on the internet, let me tell you this. Right where you are, you can get right with God. Right where you are, you can get saved. Right where you are, just how you are. Jesus doesn't say you had to change a thing in order to get saved. He says to surrender to Him and your life will be changed. I believe that. So you come today. Give your life to God. You have something to pray to God about, you come and pray. Where you are, you pray right where you are. God touch your life. Without Him, I could do nothing. Without Him, I'd surely fail. Without Him, I would be drifting like a ship without as you say without him I would be dying without him I'd be enslaved without him life would be hopeless but with Jesus thank God I Saved. Amen. Thank God you're saved. Let's sing. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? You can turn him away. Oh Jesus, my Jesus, without him. How lost I would be, I said, without him, how lost I would be. And man, pray for him and Miss Tina that all that they've got going on with his heart and situation that God will take care of it. Pastor Jim. Hello, hello. Talking to them. All right. <laughs> it's been good to be in church, huh? Amen. 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 Let's all bow our heads. Lord Jesus, we love you, and we're so thankful that you love us. And uh, 
I don't know why every time I come in here, it feels like I can just cry and cry. That we're, we're in the presence of a holy God. And uh, we're thankful. Honestly, we're thankful for that. And I've been in a lot of dry places. And uh, for a year, we haven't been in a dry place. And we're thankful for that. Lord, it's not because of us. It's not because of our preacher being on fire for God. It's just a fact, I think, you have a remnant in Okeechobee that wants to serve you and wants to love you and wants to see our nation come back to you. And God, we need some help from heaven. Lord, this is election coming up. It's not even popular to talk about it. But we need somebody that loves America and wants to see America go on. And Lord, we're not a socialist country. Amen. And we're not voting that way. Amen. And so, if those listening don't like that, you can turn the channel. <laughs> but we're here to serve you Amen. and to please you. And we're thankful for Freedom Baptist Church and the people of God in this room. We're thankful for our preacher who's not ashamed of you and, and the Bible and the Word of God and and real fire. We thank you for it, Lord. And just we'd ask that you go with our people and bring them back safely the next time. Lord, I love these people. They're so wonderful. Bless them today now. In Jesus' name, amen.